So good morning, everyone. My name is Lilla Thompson, and I'm the Chief Executive of British Water. So before I begin, I just want to say thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of Water Sector Opportunities. I want to say a special thank you to Sam Knox of Invest Northern Ireland and his colleagues, and I hope that you find my presentation of value this morning. So first of all, I'm going to start by looking at uh, British Water and the organization and what we do. So British Water is a dynamic trade association. So we've been going for a long time now, over 25 years. We're a not-for-profit organization and we have just over 200 members. Now our members include consultants, contractors, manufacturers, suppliers, and we also have eight water utilities in membership. The reason why utilities join British Water is because they want to work closely with the supply chain in order to identify innovations, technologies and solutions. So British Water delivers its services in three core areas, in the UK forum, technical forum and international forum. So we have services across those three core areas. What we do in the UK forum is we help our members to grow their business through working with the water utilities across England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland and Ireland. And what we also do for the technical forum is we help our members to focus on key topics that are grouped into focus groups. So we've got seven focus groups, one on data and analytics, one on innovation, another on micropollutants, one on real-time monitoring, sustainable water management and wastewater treatment plants. So we have members that we cluster into different particular areas and what they do is they work on codes of practice, they address any challenges that the sector is facing and what they help to do is update the sector on any technical standards that are coming through. On the international forum side, we help our members to grow their business overseas. Obviously, in light of COVID-19, that's not possible in the same way as it was before. But typically, we would organize business development visits to a range of markets such as Oman, Vietnam and, and other markets. And also, we would organize UK pavilions at overseas exhibitions. So we're really about supporting the industry, providing them with a voice and also representing um, their interests to key stakeholders and helping them to grow their business. British Water also undertakes a secretariat function for BIM for Water. Now BIM, the, the acronym BIM was known as Building Information Modeling, but now the acronym stands for Better Information Management. So BIM for Water is a government initiative. There are different BIMs in different areas and what that, that aims to do is help the sectors um, that it focus on really build up better information management and helping people to work together to collaborate to deliver better projects for the future. We are also the Secretariat for the Greece Contractors Association. It's an organisation of specifiers, installers, maintainers of Greece management systems. And again, what we do is we help to promote best practice in Greece management and we help to support food service establishments and water companies in that area. We also run a number of campaigns. The one at the moment um, that really is uh, proving very, very popular is our Women on Water campaign. And that will be brought into a wider diversity and inclusion campaign. And you'll find details on all of these initiatives on our website. So at the outset of COVID-19, we started Better Together calls. These calls started on the 20th of March and were weekly calls for briefings for the supply chain, for them to understand what was happening in the industry, to understand the latest developments, and in particular, to keep abreast of what was happening in the water companies across the UK. So these were weekly from the 20th of March and they moved to fortnightly in August. Um, so over the period of Better Together calls, we've had over 83 speakers over 28 weeks. We've had 10 chief executives and eight senior leaders from water, from 14 water and wastewater companies, including Rachel Fletcher, the chief executive of Offwat, Marcus Rink and Milo Purcell from the Drinking Water Inspectorate, and we've had speakers from the Environment Agency. 
Now these calls are really useful because um, they're for our members but also for invited guests. So if you're not a member of British Water, you're welcome to listen in on these calls. As I said, they're held every two weeks and the next call will be taking place this Friday. And really it's for the supply chain to get to hear from senior leaders in the industry as to what's happening, how COVID-19 is impacting their business, but also how we can develop and grow our business post COVID-19 in terms of the green economic recovery. So in terms of the Better Together calls, they've looked at project updates, as I've highlighted. We've also been able to brief the supply chain in terms of sites that are reopening. So Scottish Water closed all of their sites um, when we had the first wave, and then they began to reopen them. Through the Greece Contractors Association, we issued guidelines to food service establishments in terms of how to re um, reopen their catering establishments uh, and how to manage fats, oils and grease in the most appropriate way. We've also held, um, heard updates on, in terms of bad debt because obviously as um, people have been furloughed in terms of households and obviously in, in the non-household sector where businesses have been impacted and closed, we've been getting some frequent updates from the industry in terms of how that bad debt is affecting water utilities and other businesses. We've also been exploring the transition from AMP 6 to 7. Obviously, AMP 6 ended at the end of March. AMP 7 started on the 1st of April. As a result of COVID, the start of AMP 7 was delayed. So those calls enable water leaders to brief the supply chain on how those projects um, are developing and how they're coming back online. We have also been working with Water UK. Water UK is a trade association for the water utilities. They have a supply chain group. So as a result of the Better Together calls, we have now been invited to participate in those meetings at the end of those meetings so that we can share the views from the supply chain and how we can hopefully work much more closely with the water utilities throughout this difficult period. And they've also um, been issuing surveys to the water utilities to find out how they're being impacted by COVID-19 and whether they're running short of any supplies. So again, that can be just um, that can be addressed at a government level. So as I mentioned earlier, we've been discussing the water industry's place in the green economic recovery, and also recently DEFRA, Ofwat, the Environment Agency, and other government bodies wrote to the water utilities to ask what enhancement projects they could bring forward to help supply chain companies win business in the UK. So I'm now going to come on to the landscape in terms of AMP7. So I'm now going to come on to AMP7. So AMP7 is a spending cycle for the next five years. So in December of last year, of what issued its final determination, for the water companies in England and Wales. It's a 51 billion pound package, more than the last five year cycle. Um, some of the water companies are contesting it at the moment with the CMA because they're saying that the money that they've been allocated over the next five years is not sufficient to reduce leakage, to build resilience in the water sector. So they're currently going through at the moment. The overall package is really to address um, long-term drought challenges, um, to invest 1 billion to help protect um, communities from flooding, to reduce pollution incidents by 30%, to cut leakage by 16%, to improve more than 12,000 kilometres of river, and to help customers cut water use by 13%. Also, the key is to reduce um, the average bills, and they will reduce by 12% before inflation over the next five years. So in terms of AMP7, as I um, described earlier, over the next five years, 51 billion pounds will be spent by the water companies in England and Wales. And what we do as British Water is we help the supply chain to get access to the water companies so that they can understand what their plans are for AMP7, what sorts of solutions and technologies that they're looking for, what their key focus areas are for year one, year two, and so on. So as part of that, we organise water company liaison meetings. We've organised five so far. We've organised one with Thames Water, Seven Trent, Southwest Water, Bristol Water, 
and our most recent one was with Scottish Water. As a result of those water company liaison meetings, we are also approached by water companies to help them to reach out to the supply chain. So our members were invited to the Thames Water Supplier Summit, which was held on the 29th of September. And that was for the Thames Water team to update the supply chain and how they want to get much better engagement with the supply chain and how they are going to restructure in terms of the way that they procure and work with companies to identify innovations over the next five years. We have also been invited to support the Scottish Water Net Zero Emissions event on the 29th of October. If you look at the events page of our website, you'll be able to see when that event goes live. Also, we have the next water company laser meeting coming up with Wessex Water on the 4th of November, and then with Anglin on the 1st of December, and then our dates are to be confirmed with Northumbrian and Yorkshire Water. So at these water company laser meetings, which are now held virtually, it enables the water company to give a thorough update on its capital delivery and asset management programs. So they break down the spend, they explain what they're doing in terms of digital technologies, um, whether they're looking for drones, whether they're buying sensors, whether they're looking for pump technologies and solutions. So it really enables the supply chain to ask questions directly of the water companies to understand if their solutions best fit with that particular water company. In terms of the work that we do more broadly outside the water company meetings, we also work with different organisations that support the supply chain. So we're at the moment we're working with an organisation called Water Briefing. They have issued a 2020 Water Briefing report and this gives a complete overview of the AMP7 projects in terms of the tier one contractors that are working on the projects over the next seven years and our um, members can secure a discount on that report. If you want to see some of the information highlighted on that report, you can go to the Water Briefing website. So what we aim to do is provide clarity on the project delays with the visibility of project pipelines. We ask the water companies to provide that, not only on the Better Together calls, but also on the water company liaison meetings and through direct discussions with the water companies. We also ask them to provide statements of needs so following these water company lays or meetings, we also ask them now to provide us with a list of four or five key areas that they're trying to address or four challenges that they're trying to meet or any particular solutions that they're looking for. And then we go back out to industry and we find the best companies that could potentially meet those needs for those water companies. That's a new thing that we're going to start rolling out. We're also going to be exploring themes within British Water so the current procurement model, is it fit for purpose? And as part of that, we're going to be issuing short, sharp surveys so the supply chain can give us feedback so that we can help to streamline what it is that we do and make sure that British Water is providing the services that it should be providing moving forward. At the moment, we've got a COVID-19 supply chain impact survey. So if anyone goes to our website, they'll see a thumbnail. If you click on that thumbnail, it will take you directly to the survey, which you can complete. The deadline for that survey is the 14th of October, but we'll probably extend it by a couple of days. And it takes five minutes to complete. And what we want to understand is how COVID-19 has impacted the supply chain. So we can feed that through to key stakeholders in the industry to try and influence positive change for the supply chain. It asks how companies have been affected in terms of cash flow, turnover, whether you've had to furlough any staff, whether you're planning to make any staff redundant. And obviously, if you don't want to answer those questions, you could always write um, not applicable or you don't wish to answer those questions. But what we're trying to do is get a good understanding as, how the, as to how the supply chain has been impacted. The bullet point at the moment is highlighting the fact that um, very recently, the Water Industry Commission for Scotland has issued its draft determinations for the strategic review of charges for 21. So those strategic review of charges will cover from 2021 to 2027. And what they envisage is that Scottish Water will be able to spend 4.5 billion over this period of time on water and wastewater projects over the next six years. And that's an increase of 1 billion on the current year. So we're not only tracking what's happening in England and Wales, 
but we're, we're tracking what's happening not only across the UK, but globally to support companies in the supply chain. So in terms of the landscape, in terms of collaboration and innovation, I thought it was important that I include this slide. So every year we issue a water company performance survey. And again, that information can be seen on our website. So if you go to the UK forum section, you'll see a tab for the water company performance survey and you'll see the tab for 2020. Now that asks a number of questions of the supply chain, members and non-members, and they're asked to rank water companies across 11 different themes. It includes questions on innovation, procurement, the appetite of the water utilities in terms of how they engage with the supply chain. Now, unfortunately, innovation was scored the lowest in the server that we issued this year. And it, the reason for that was because in terms of innovation, um, the appetite for innovation in water companies was not as high as companies would have liked. The process for assessing and adopting innovation was not as strong as it could have been. The overall speed for adoption of innovation is slow and also collaboration and innovation and R&D testing was also low. So what we are keen is that Ofwat have issued a 2 million innovation fund and we're hoping through this 200 million to 200 million innovation fund that this will help to address the fact that innovation in the water sector and the view of innovation in the water sector is changed and that we can more rapidly see the adoption of innovation in the water industry. So as part of that, we have responded to Ofwat's consultations on the Innovation Fund. You can see our responses on our website. Last week, the final innovation strategy was launched by 19 water and wastewater companies and key stakeholders. And I would highly recommend that you um, look for that innovation strategy. Again, there's a link on our website on the UK Forum page. If you have a look at that page and then click on the UK Water market overview page, you'll see a link to the innovation strategy. That will set out what the water utilities believe need to happen over the next five years and beyond. And it sets out also the parameters for the innovation that will be sought, and they link in with the sustainable development goals, and also the big questions that are asked by UQIR, the water industry research organization. So I'd recommend you look at that. The innovation strategy also includes the suggestion of a centre of excellence, a virtual centre of excellence. So that sort of brings together all the key work that has been done across the UK by different water utilities and the discussions around how that centre of excellence will work are currently being discussed. And that centre of excellence is, is expected to go live in spring 21. Coming back to the innovation fund, there'll be an, a 2 million innovation water challenge, and that will particularly be for small and medium sized companies. And that will be launched in January 21. And then the 40 million main competition will start in April 21. So if you're currently working with water companies, continue to, to, to communicate with them, let them know that you're aware of the innovation fund, ask them what they might be planning so that you can collaborate with them in order to put projects forward to get access to this 200 million innovation fund. So at the moment Ofwat is looking for a delivery partner and is looking at the governance for this fund and one of the key things that I've been saying in my discussions with Ofwat and others is that the culture for innovation so there's got to be a willingness by water utilities and the adequate resources and time that's that's required in order so that we can push through innovation and so that supply chain companies can get feedback that they need in terms of trials, why the trials might have not have worked, and what different things maybe they could change to see their innovations push through, not only in one company, but across different water companies in the UK. So just to finish up then, that's my email address. You can feel free to email me. Some of the things I've highlighted are only for British Water members only. So the water company lays the meetings are for members only. They get access to the recordings and the presentation slides after the meetings. But we do have a number of different services that are open to non-members. So do have a look at our website. In terms of the things that we'll be working on in the future, we're trying to make sure that communication from tier one contractors is coming through to companies. Many of our companies want to see information from contract managers on what they expect from their suppliers. 
They want to see better information on the spending and status of all water companies. And also they want to see capital programs coming through and they want clarity in terms of, you know, what access companies can get to future projects. So these are all the things that were taken forward on behalf of the supply chain. So we'd love to hear your thoughts and views, if not on the COVID-19 survey, but on any future ones that we issue. So in closing, I just want to say thank you so much again to Invest Northern Ireland, and I look forward to your questions. Thanks again.